back to another uh, video feature of the Mercy Rolls Handbook. We're taking a spin around the crystals with our uh, Louvre gimbal here to show you some of the uh, incredible design, art features, aesthetic sensibilities, and asking the question, is crystals the epitome of the postmodern mall? So let's go on around inside for a tour. Okay, we'll begin the tour here, and I'll give you a lot of footage today, maybe a little less voiceover than I typically do. I think this is a mall that um, is captivating. Uh, you know, there's a lot of different sensibilities going on at this mall, but if you compare this mall to the traditional American shopping mall, um, I think you see something quite different um, in two senses. One is the design. And the second, I think, is maybe the intended experience. And in some senses, I think crystals can be a little off-putting because of the second area. Um, you know, it's clearly geared at the high end. And um, I have to admit, I think I've only been inside actually one or two stores inside crystals. You know, it's very high end. It's very boutique. It's very um, bourgeois, I guess you would say. Not that there's anything wrong with that, um, but that's just my sensibility about it. Now, in the past, I've done at least three features on crystals um, back, I guess, four years ago. This is 2017. I'm shooting this one. So on the trees, guest interactivity, and innovative architecture, some of this starts to repeat, but it's nice to update my videos over the years. Now, we're zipping down the strip here in some time-lapse um, stock footage, and I show this because one of the things that crystals does along with the adjacent city center is really transform the strip and we're seeing some remarkable transformation so as we zip by Venetian and uh, Caesars Palace and we get closer to city center we realize that something entirely different is going on we pan through the skyline of city center and in all reality we could be somewhere else right we, we don't necessarily um, even recall where we're at I mean it's something absolutely different in terms of the architectural project and one of the things I think we're seeing a lessening of is the reliance on thematic architecture and more reliance on abstract in this case postmodernist architecture and design I mean look at the marvel that is city center and crystals it's just absolutely stunning to look at and you get this sense too when you walk inside and I'll take you through some of the initial video here I did a couple walkthroughs today when I shot this. Uh, I did one with um, some footage with my, um, my uh, sorry, my iPhone 7. My finger's getting in the screen there. And um, this is just like my initial impression. It's kind of shaky. And then I do some gimbal stuff with the GoPro, which I think turned out pretty nice. And that earlier stuff you saw was with the Blackmagic camera. This is one of these malls where literally I think you could spend more time here taking photographs and looking at all the design and the interactive art features than actually shopping. Now again, if you're way into Gucci and some of these brands and you have the money to afford it, you know, by all means, look at the view from outside there. It's pretty nice. Um, but, you know, I think for a lot of people, they walk through this space as they're moving from, say, the Strip from the Cosmopolitan into the Aria and the rest of City Center. And it's a great space in that sense, right? There's a liminality to it, I think, as you transition from the aria into this space and then onto the strip and once you get onto the strip of course it looks very very different so now we're going back inside this way this should be with the gopro yes the gopro gimbal you see todd english pub on the left there um you know there used to be a um was it right there there used to be a um I'm trying to think she was in uh desperate housewives um, Eva Longoria, there used to be a restaurant slash club there. You know, some of the food offerings have changed over time. The cafe, which is Starbucks down below, used to be Pods um, in the past. There was also a um, coffee shop and newspaper shop just below that and to the left. That closed. There was a really cool, the one place I used to go in a lot was the Asseline uh, bookstore, high-end bookstore that was just down to the right before you get to the... Uh, Rockwell design trees, the postmodern trees as I call them. One of the things I like about this is we pan up. This is Daniel Liebeskin's space, if you know his work. Um, marvelous, one of the world's top architects. Postmodernist, certainly in terms of the design sensibility of the space. Um, the angularity of it. Um, you'll notice throughout they, they do have the plaques describing the artwork, which is pretty cool. So the fact that they've highlighted the art here 
on par with say what's going on at the Aria as well as I would say the Cosmopolitan which is distinct from City Center of course but those casino spaces and retail spaces focus on aesthetics as part of the lifestyle interests of say the typical guest you get this sensibility when you go down those stairs to the left there you're not going to find stairs like that in any other mall in the world really I mean you go to Singapore you have some pretty amazing malls in Dubai and so forth but this is a mall that gets us thinking in a different sense what a mall really should be I mean it's just absolutely marvelous in terms of walking through it um, I always feel like I'm in another world um, in a futuristic world and I think particularly when it's not so crowded and you can just walk through and take in some of the sights here and enjoy things um, it challenges what we think of, of malls now on the other hand I'm sure some people on social media and Yelp and so forth would find the space maybe to be too austere to be too off-putting because it doesn't really draw them in in the traditional sense if you walk through um, maybe malls that have a more thematic focus like the forum shops just down the street in Las Vegas on the strip um, they're more inviting I think uh, the design the statuary some of the seating elements the um, the shows that they have the fall of Atlantis and certainly the roof which gives you that sense of being enveloped right within this uh, atmospheric space there's atmosphere here but it's more what you'd get if you'd walk into one of the great um, museums in the world or a postmodern design space something of that nature as opposed to saying this envelops me in that you know traditional thematic sense so we'll go down the escalator here and look at some of the um, the amazing design and I think I'll um, not I won't say much for a little bit and you can just take in some of the sights here at Crystal's Las Vegas Now, um, to uh, talk a little bit more here, one of the things I would say that is really cool about Crystals is the interactive um, artwork that they have here. This one, you know, involves ice and water. Um, it, it is, you know, one of two pieces of art, including the, the mini tornadoes down the way, that um, I think really captivates people when they see this. It's, it's something like you'd see in a great museum in terms of, say, a piece of conceptual art or some sort of interactive art. Um, very expensive when you think about the design approach here at uh, Crystals, not just the architecture, but um, so many of the uh, great restaurants like the one in the background there and of course this amazing artwork. I also wanted to say that in 2016, MGM and um, Resorts World, the co-owners of um, City Center and, and Crystals, um, closed a sale for over a billion dollars on this mall. One of the things that happened when um, the whole complex opened in 2009 city center and crystals was um, you know it was nearly bankrupt from the beginning and I think over the years they've um, done a lot better here I'm, I guess I'm recording some more video as we're walking through with the I'm like multitasking is often happens when I'm doing these videos but um, so the sale of the mall I think perhaps suggests that there'll be some new directions for it I'm always curious when you have a mall like this one unlike say Caesars if you saw my video on Caesars forum shops, they could, you know, change the seating areas over time. They could adapt the theme. They could maintain the nostalgic uh, focus. 
and at the same time change it a little bit. So I'd be curious to see what they could do here hypothetically in the future if they did want to change the design around. In a sense, they're kind of stuck. Now, I think it's an amazing space, one of my favorites of any mall I've seen. But if you wanted to, to um, alter it um, in terms of the retail offerings or the experiential offerings to the guest, that could be a challenge, you might say, in terms of how you would pull that off. Okay, so we're looking at this piece, uh, Halo, and a lot of people call this the uh, mini tornadoes. Um, I took a ton of video, and um, I guess for me, this is like a really fascinating piece. I think it's one of those that is an eye-stopping piece, and uh, I will um, show a lot of this video, and if you ever get bored, then you can fast forward. If you don't, you can watch it with everyone else. Um, one of the things I wanted to mention is that in some other videos I'm doing a feature on um, the Aria and the Cosmopolitan and some other spaces in regards to art on the strip. So I'll talk a little more about the art in um, that particular video. But one thing to mention is I think earlier I talked about the um, the Terrell piece uh, which is actually up at the top. Um, those four lights that are sort of cutouts that actually connect to the monorail station. I didn't get a chance to go up there, so you should definitely check that out. And the other interesting thing about that same artist is that if you go to the Louis Vuitton uh, store, I haven't done this yet, there's the uh, cutouts right there, the Terrell piece. Um, but on the fourth floor of the Louis Vuitton store, third floor, sorry, um, he has a piece there that is this immersive um, color room and I haven't had a chance to see it yet. It's one of those that you have to reserve a few weeks in advance and um, you have to put your name on the list to uh, check it out. But that might be something to um, to inquire about if you're interested in um, you know something like that as I am. But again, I think these uh, particular um, art features work really well in this mall. Um, I think anything that's going to um, come off as convincing in this mall as I take some more video here we have like a meta thing going on, right? Screen within a screen. Um, you know, I, I found that when I take these videos, I can never take enough, as you're probably discovering, but with multiple cameras. Um, each camera, of course, shoots um, in a different sense, and that's something maybe to uh, think about if you research these spaces, as I do, is how exactly do you want to go about documenting the spaces? This is the kind of space that I think you could spend hours just taking still images and video. I will um, segue in a little bit into some uh, s slow motion versions of the tornadoes, because uh, if you have the full speed tor tornadoes, it seems reasonable to me that you need the slow speed versions of the tornadoes. And I promise you I will not do video effects on these, because I, I could spend probably 30 minutes just showing you video of of, uh, tornadoes but uh, sometimes that's just going to be the case with with these videos um, so yeah in any case if you're doing photo if you're doing video it's always something to think about in terms of how you're going to capture what you see in the space particularly a space like this that I think offers so much evocative visual sensory stimuli to the guest who visits the space Okay, as promised, I will now uh, engage the gratuitous um, tornado art slow motion videos. Um, you get a little bit of this, I will turn up the volume and I will be quiet for a little bit. And then after that, I'll take you um, up the stairs and out crystals again and we'll kind of uh, summarize, I think, what crystals means in terms of being uh, this postmodern mall as I've described it today.
Okay, so as we watch just a little bit more of slow-mo of this, um, how often do you get to see slow-mos of mini artsy tornadoes? Um, I thought I would reflect on two things. One is this idea of crystals being um, a postmodern mall, and then the second is a reflection on maybe how to look at malls in an experiential ethnographic sense. So, you know, in terms of the first regard, again, I think if you know um, much about the work of Daniel Liebeskin, who was the architect who designed crystals, um, you know that there's something to be said about just the exterior of any building that you walk into, right? It tells you, in a sense, an instant story about what is going to be happening on the inside. I think it'd be impossible to say, um, I mean, just imagine if we had a, a big box store like Walmart or Target or Costco, Sam's Club, whatever, that you know had the exterior of a Daniel Liebeskin structure like this one um, at Crystals, right? It, it just wouldn't happen. And I'm not saying we shouldn't play with um, uh, you know, facades and the um, exterior of, of buildings to create new expectations. Actually, in fact, I think that's what they're doing here because as a mall, it looks nothing like, say, um, you know, the, the fashion outlet mall down, down the street or, say, the Miracle Mile shops. Both of those, I think, maintain a, a traditional approach to the mall in terms of the layout. Um, you know, even this mall, right, beyond the architecture, as you step inside, the way you navigate the space, I think they've, um, you know, mixed it up a little bit in terms of how the guests um, interacts with the space. There is a like circular pattern, but the way that you access it essentially differs, um, I think, from you know traditional malls if you look at the layout of, of the particular mall. Um, the other thing as we've been talking about is on the inside, you get this approach to design. A lot of the David Rockwell group stuff with the trees and some of the other features, I think really establishes something different and unique for the guests who enters this space. I think you have to do something like this here at um, a crystals because it does have such a, a large task to take on in terms of fitting in with the overall aesthetic of city center. Again, as we look at the art here, city center is a heavily aesthetic um, laden space or spaces everywhere you go from the aria to the mandarin to you know outside the vera you see art everywhere and so i think it has to be the kind of art as we're seeing here that works right it has to work within the context of what is being done here um, the surfaces are certainly amazing just look at this floor we're walking on and up the staircase um, i've said a lot earlier about the angularity about the structure, the, the, the sight lines that you see here in this Libeskin space. Um, for me, it's a remarkable space. I mean, it, it's one of the great malls in the world from an architectural standpoint. Now, from a retail standpoint, experiential standpoint, this is where I think we have to get into a little bit of that ethnographic um, uh, desire to understand what we're talking about. So I think one of the things that would be interesting, and again, I'm coming from the perspective of someone who consults on you know these sorts of spaces. I've worked in the service industry, specifically the theme park industry, and I'm also a cultural anthropologist who worked at a train as a trainer at a theme park. And um, you know, so I've seen a lot of this world and its various manifest man manifestations. Sorry about that. And one of the things is we're walking up the stair here. You're getting this is my GoPro shot, so I think you see it's a lot steadier than any video I've done in the past uh, here at Crystals or anywhere on the Strip. So uh, a shout out to Lou for the uh, stabilizer that I purchased from them because so far it's been really pretty remarkable in terms of giving these beautiful steady shots. Um, the other nice thing about the GoPro in a space like this is we get that crazy wide angle that allows us to take in so much more than we would with um, our iPhone or uh, many other lenses out there. Um, now you're not going to see above us which is the uh, tram um, that goes to the Ari and Bellagio and so forth and I'm kind of kicking myself for not going up there and taking some video and stills and so forth but you're still getting a nice view I think of things but so the experiential side of, of things let's go back to that what I'm suggesting to you earlier is that this mall I think suffers a little bit from an identity crisis in that the um, types of stores and services are so high-end you know other than say the Starbucks uh, everything else is generally really really high-end fashion um, again I'm not someone who would ever shop in any of these stores it doesn't necessarily say anything I mean it says something I guess about my level of income and this certainly is 
a mall that caters to, I think, a very bourgeois clientele. Nothing wrong with that. There are different malls around the world that have different services for guests. If you go across the Vegas Strip, you'll see a slew of different types of stores that range from you know, um, like let's go to say Bonanza Gifts, which is really kind of lower end 99 cent stuff to all the strip mall mini stores, which I'll be featuring in my video on the strip um, coming up uh, in a little bit, future video to, um, you know, the Fashion Mall to uh, Miracle Mile Mall, Town Square. There are a ton of malls in Vegas and Henderson and the outlying areas. And I think they all have a different demographic. Certainly the demographic here is, you know, an upper class one. Now, th that's not necessarily a bad thing, but for me, looking at the mall experientially, I think it leaves a little bit to de be desired for the guest who doesn't want to shop here, they, who doesn't want to shop at the Prada store. So. Um, what do you offer to the guests? Is there something else you could offer here experientially beyond a couple of cool sculptures, the mall itself, itself, itself in terms of the architecture, and some of those other visual sensory features? So it's a question to, to ask ourselves. We're going out here, you sort of see the strip now, um, the sign for the Aria. We can also go on to the Cosmo if we wanted to as well. So it, it gives us a sense, I think, of how enveloping uh, Crystals is as a space. And I, I guess I would suggest to you then, in terms of looking at the experiential qualities of malls, and I'll show you some uh, still shots here as, as we get ready to close out this video, I would suggest to you that it'd be important to take, to take on ethnographic studies of malls. Um, in a mall space, you certainly cannot interview you know, uh, guests or customers. I remember going to um, one of the big malls in, in uh, Southern California and, you know, even seeing policies about photo and video. Unfortunately, in Vegas, you, you can take photo and video, but I know some malls are even looking down on that, which is challenging for researchers like myself. But what I'm suggesting to you is that I think what we need to do is we need to really look at the ethnographic side of things. It's something I haven't done a lot necessarily at Crystals to understand who is the typical guest, what are they looking for in terms of brands, in terms of services in terms of experiences and so forth and it's I think a question for the future of all retail particularly lifestyle retail you know if you read Pine and Gilmore's work they would suggest to us that indeed it is about creating experiences for guests and yes you will not escape yet another uh, video I took of Halo I think it must have taken like 10 minutes of this so I will subject you to it uh, until the end here and it's 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 uh, just a little bit more of this but in any case what I'm suggesting to you is in the world of online retail to compete with online retail I think you have to offer um, experiences and services that are giving a sense of grounding of, of, of space and of experience that go beyond just the product or the service itself so it's something to think about I think crystals does that in some respects again a limitation maybe is the brands and the social class implications of the brands that are being sold here for guests so it's something to think about as we study malls certainly in the future i hope you enjoyed the video feature today here at crystals in las vegas uh, please come back for additional video features of the immersive world's handbook